Rivers flow. Come on, come on. If you, if you let something go, he'll put something else in there. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, if you let something go, he'll put something else in there. We call it replacement. Come on, replace. Come on, there's a replacing. I want y'all to know people have been praying for moments. People, people have been praying for a moment for a long time. Let me tell you, some other people need a moment. Some other people need a moment. But you can't manufacture moments. You can't manufacture moments. Now I got an assignment. And this is part of my message today. This is all part of my message, y'all. This is all part of my message. This is, trust me, this is part of the message. Let me tell you how this works. I wish more people was honest enough to be down here and be down up front. I wish more people would, but, you know, to each their own. I wish more people would be honest and say, I sure need something new or different in my life. I wish, I wish more people would be honest about it and say, you know what? I'm so sick and tired of what has been and struggling the way I've been struggling. I'm so tired of it and doing this in my own strength and I've been trying to be saved and playing like I'm saved and, 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 and I need some power. I need some power. I need some power. I need some power. I told y'all I felt fire on the road. I felt fire. I've, and so now, come on, we're about to release a new tongue, a new something now. There's going to be something new getting ready to happen. And I'm 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 going to cut across today, but trust me, there's something new about to happen in your life. There was nothing greater than this moment, but there's something new about to happen. And when was the last time y'all said somebody had to leave church drunk? When, when, come on, that used, to be, that used to be what happened in the church where, where people had to get carried out to church and carried to a car. That's the way church used to be when, when they were so full of power that they were not themselves anymore, like on the day of Pentecost. And if listen, if you're going to ever, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to do my assignment real quick. If you're going to make any impact in this community and this culture, you're going to need some power to come against all, all the hell that's out there. You're going to need some power. And um, if you're at your seat and need some power, you better lift your hands and say, I need some power. I don't, you better, you better lift your hands. And say, I, I'm, I'm, I need some power. I ain't gonna make y'all, but if you're at your seat, you might want to lift your hands. And say, I need to get, I need some more power. I, I'm, I'm running on E, and what I, I thought I had, what I needed, but your struggle proves to you that you don't have the power that you need. Your struggle proves that you don't have the power you need. So I'm going to command people to be filled today. Be filled. Be filled. And every seed that was sown that would block this flow. Yeah, we eradicate now. And I heard God say real clearly, tell my people it's time for something new now. I heard God say real clearly, tell my people it's time for something new. All right, let me, let, me, let me help y'all. When you're at your lowest point, you go buy a new dress, a new pair of shoes, and, and your whole world changes. Just something new does, I don't want to mess with y'all, something new does wonders for you. When you're in a slump, people who are in a midlife crisis, about to check out, they go buy a new car. It's just the thought of something new coming in your life that brings hope and excitement again. And I'm just telling y'all, God said it's time for something new. It's time to break these same old patterns, the same old tradition, the same old routine. It's time to do something different because there is more to life than what you're currently experiencing. There is something more. And if y'all, if y'all would help me, I'll cut through real fast. Point to somebody and say, there's more. To, there, there's more. There's more. Come on, tell somebody there's more. There's, there's more. I'm telling y'all, there's more. If there is no hope, we are men most miserable. Oh, good God. I'm, let me show this in the Bible. I'm, I'm not doing a full message today. 
Because I need to show y'all that God is interested in you getting something new now. And I want y'all to walk out of here saying who I was wasn't good enough. All right, let me, let me, let me be my street stuff today. I feel like I got to be street smart. That's, can I be street smart? You want me to talk street? Okay, thank you. Y'all know she helps me. The babies tell me when I need to shift, when I need to shut up. The babies are my clock. Don't believe the lie. Who you have been was not good enough to get you to your future. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe your own evaluation. <laughs> it, your evaluation is what your past was, but what you did will not get you there. It got you here. How you used to pray, it carried you through, but it ain't going to carry you all the way through. You got to pray something different. The two scriptures, I'm, I'm just being cynical, but the few scriptures I knew, they won't carry me all the way to where I'm trying to get now. At some point in time, we got to progress beyond Jesus love me, this I know. Come on, everybody knows Jesus wept, but we got to know something different than Jesus wept. That's a powerful verse. Every scripture is loaded, but you need a new revelation because here's my revelation for you. You take this to the bank. A new revelation will always bring you to a new season. A new revelation will always tell you it's time that you're going into a new season. New revelation tells you it's time for a new season. All right, I got, listen for my, nope, 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 I have visitors. My people make me go places and say stuff that I don't typically say. I have extended family here today, so I, I want to be nice. But I want to I tell you the truth. If you insist on holding on to the pain of your past, you're going to be that person that you always was. I want I want to, I just got to tell you, no, I got scriptures, but I got to tell you what I know right now. If you insist on holding on to the pain in your past, you're going to keep repeating your same experience all your life. You need a new revelation. It's in the Bible over and over again. Whenever God wanted his people to go somewhere different, he revealed another side of himself. He revealed something new, which tells me that some 90% of the stuff you're going through is because God is trying to show you something new in life right now. Remember in the Old Testament, um, he was always El. He was always Jehovah. But when he wanted his people to know that he was a provider, he would let their resources shrivel up. And then he would introduce himself as Jireh. He was always Jehovah Jireh. But they didn't know it. So that new revelation of Jehovah Jireh brought them into a new season of supply. And so I'm telling y'all what God told me real clearly. It's time for you all to begin to expect new stuff. I don't know why. I'm, I'm going to stay on this. Let me, let me give y'all a scripture. I'm, I'll clean this up. Listen, next week, I don't know what she's going to preach about. It's going to be a new message y'all have never heard because it won't be me. But after she leaves, I'm coming back to preach this. Because you have got to, let me, let, me, let me give it to you the way I hear it. You've got to raise your expectation that there's something else is coming. And that something is called new. The reason why we battle cycles of depression and doubt and despair is because we don't believe anything new is going to ever happen. We believe we're confined to these prisons called life. It's always going to be this way. I'm going to always have this experience. And when we, when, we, when we have nothing new coming, then it puts us in a prison that we can't move out of. So you got to expect new things. Let me just show you this. My time, I ain't got but a few seconds. I'm going to come back and clean this up next week. Look, Isaiah 43, 19. I'm going to come back and clean this up next week. He said, behold, 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 I will do a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. I won't, I won't get through it. I won't even get through it. Behold, I will do a new thing. Anybody ready for something new in your life now? I'm just... Trying to keep my composure because all the hell I've been enduring and all the foolish people around and all this other stuff, you know, I'm ready for something new. All right, be still, Chris. Every once in a while, you ought to just slip here and say, Lord, send me something new. Just, Lord, I need something new in my life. I don't, I don't, 
Tried pain, don't like it, I need something new. Tried being broke, don't like that, I need something new. Been lonely, tried that, don't like that, I need something new. Been miserable, didn't like that either, I need something new. See, 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 the problem is we keep trying to say the old prayers that had nothing to them. Now I lay me down to sleep. I'm going to pray to the Lord, my soul to keep. And if I should die before I wake, I'm going to pray to the Lord, my soul to take. Now, what new, what, what, what new's coming? All you said is keep me in the same place and same state I'm in and let me wake up into it again. What, come on, what kind of prayer is that? Now I lay me down to sleep. I'm going to lay down. I pray to the Lord, my soul to keep. Keep me right where I'm at. And if I should die before I wake, get me out of here. Take my soul. Come on, and then you wake up the next morning into the same stuff over and over again. Nothing different. And that same cycle of depression and despair start knocking at your door. The same old thing starts knocking again. Why? Because nothing new. We bought into the lie that it's going to be this way forever. Nothing new. But listen, let me help you with a definition of new. Y'all watch this real carefully. Watch this real carefully. If Patrick gives me his car, it's a new car for me. I just help y'all. I help you with understand what new is. I ain't never drove before. I never owned it before. I'm, it's, it's never been mine before. And so I don't care what condition is in. The thought that I'm getting something new does wonders for you. When the, when the last time you expected, I'm, I'm really trying, I'm trying to help raise your expectation level this morning. That something new's got to happen. Look, all right, let me, let me, let me step back here and tell y'all. Prophesy to yourself this morning. Say something new has to happen. See, y'all don't believe it. You, something new going to happen. Something new got to happen. Something new. No, I want you to prophesy to yourself and say something new is going to happen. Come on, you got, this, you got to begin to tell yourself, I refuse to keep having the same experience over and over. I ref- you know what? I got angry. I said, I refuse to let 2015 end the same way 2014 and 2013 did. Unfulfilled promises, unfulfilled dreams, um, all these goals. Not- Come on, if you, if, if you had a goal list, a continuous goal list, it would roll over 2013 to 2014 to 2015. You'd have so many goals, you'd be miserable. Look at this. And I'm going I'm to get out of here. I, I would do a new thing. Watch this. Now it, will spring, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Here's a revelation I want you to get. And please hear me. God can do something new in your life and you can miss it. You never, we didn't see that in the scripture carefully. He could be doing something new in your life. You can miss it. Where did I get that from? Shall ye not know it? In other words, he could be doing something new in your life and you have no clue about it. And here's where I want to get to. If I don't get no worse today, this is, this is the rest of the message God told me to tell y'all. Stop fighting what I'm trying to do new in your life. Many of us are fighting the new thing. Trying to, we're fighting the new thing. God is trying to do something new, but we're fighting against it. We're fighting because we don't know it's him doing something new. Because there's safety in, in what was old. Come on, human beings are very routine. Let, let, me, let, let, let me tell on you. I'm going to tell on the person beside you. That person beside you drives the same way to work every day and have driven that same route for years. They ain't never went a different route. Same route. Come on, there's other trees, other grass, other streets. There's other new stuff, but we're so routine that we miss out on all kind of stuff in life. Being routine because it's safe. But, 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 but it's time for something new now. We, we can't keep for the sake of being who we was doing what we have done because it's possible we can miss it. Let me, let me play this out practically. I don't have, I don't have much to say to that. I thought I, I don't, you drive your same routine, stale route to work. All of a sudden, this day is a traffic jam. 90% of us will sit there, complain, and gripe, and say, Lord, move the traffic instead of taking a different route. More than one street leads to your job. You can go a different way to get out to traffic. But most of us 
will sit in the traffic jam of life and the routineness and be dissatisfied instead of just trying something new for once. See what I mean? We've gotten into a rut. And so now we're, we're breeding dissatisfaction and we're not looking for anything new. And so now life becomes horrible and just a pit. And so my, my job is to pull you up out of the pit and say, God is interested in doing something new in your life, and you may be missing it. You may be missing the signals. The traffic jam could be just a signal going a different way today. Maybe I want to show you something different. Maybe, maybe there's a person over there I need you to bless. Just maybe I want to speak to you by the river. I don't know, but maybe he want to do something different. But we could be rejecting what he's doing new. And so that's one of the things God told me. He said, Chris, please tell them. Don't fight what I'm doing new in their life. Tell them to let it go. Just trust me. Just trust me. Let, me. let me give you one more scripture because I'm telling you, I heard this so strongly. Um, I, 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 will, I will be, God will help me turn into a monkey if I just allow 2015 to be the same way 2014 and 2013 was. You don't know how you set yourself up for despair by allowing yourselves to stay in the same cycle. And then December 30th, everybody have these breakdowns because you start saying, I didn't accomplish. Here's another year. I didn't do it again this year. I knew I said I was going to do it. I said I was going to do it last year. I said I was going to do it the year before. I said I was going to do it two years before. Here I'm a whole other year gone by and I still hadn't done it. And you don't realize you're setting yourself up for a meltdown every year. All right. So you got to be careful to do something different. Check this out. This is how new it is. He'll make a way to wilderness and rivers in the desert. Don't you see the oxymorons in the scripture? Rivers in a desert? A desert has a dry place, but he's saying to be well watered. Ooh, come on. But, but this is also the reminder of what he did for his Israelites when they were in the desert, in the wilderness. He made a way. He put water out of rocks. Let me move on. I just want to show one of the scripture because I feel like, um, look, go to Isaiah 62 and 2. I, I'll finish this later. I need to show you this. I'm just, I want, I want to, I, I have to become, because I want to, I want to prophesy so badly. This is just not, these are not my days. Just take it as in corporate moments. Take, take this, Y'all better take these. Let me, while y'all go to Isaiah 62, let me teach y'all how to receive prophetic words. You, you receive it. You say amen. You say I agree. You say that's me. You say something because the words are seeds. And when seeds go out, they have to fall on the soil. And whatever soil, they, if, in, if they fall to any receptive soil, fruit will come out of it. So look at Isaiah 62. This is what it reads. And the Gentile, Gentile shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. Had to take a break. And thou shalt be called by a new name. Ooh. I'm, the way God be telling me stuff is so exciting to me. Let, me. let me put it this way. You used to be called liar, but they don't call you that no more. You get a new name. Mm. You used to be the street walker. You know, <laughs> you got a new name now. You used to be the tricks that are manipulated, but you get a new name now. Come on, there's something about when you get with God that he changes your name. Come on, Jacob, you can get a name change. Come on, Abram, you can get a, you can't get a name change. But I don't know if I'm going to do this justice because of my short time. Aren't you tired of them saying what they say about you? Come on, let God change your name. Did he say um, uh, um, you'll be the head and not the tail? That's a name change. <laughs> you'll be above and not beneath. You'll lend and not borrow, lender, borrower. These are name changes. Come on, but you got to begin to live and wake up and expect this change to happen, or you will be the same person you have been forever. You will be miserable. You're going to be 82 and saying, I remember. I wish I would have. Oh, I wish I would have just I'm telling y'all that's that's the worst thing I have growing up. I said, Lord, please don't let me be 80 years old and no strength left my body saying I wish I would have did it when I had strength. Come on. Why not do it now? Do something different. 
So let me ask you a question. Check this out. Let me, now let me ruffle your feathers. What are you going to say different? See, see, it's one thing when God says it. But what, what are you going to say differently now? You always get on my nerve. I can't say that no more. Mm, 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 mm. That's the old me talking. Why? Because I don't want to see that anymore. All right, let me, let me bring this to a close. I was trying to be polite. Let me bring this to a close. Life and death is the power of your tongue. If you're tired of what you've been eating, say something differently about it. You got to start speaking new. You cannot keep doing the same thing and mad. Talking about um, um, Caitlin always. You have just prophesied she's going to keep doing what she's always done. And mad about it. When are you going to say something new? The Bible says bless. Come on, we're supposed to bless those that despitefully and willfully misuse me. So uh, um, the Bible does say my niceness will heap ashes of coal on, on the enemy. It did say that, didn't it? That is what's in the Bible. So if I keep saying you're going to always be this way, am I not empowering her to be that way in my life forever? Then could it be possible? Watch this. Could it be possible that Caitlin is mean to me and nice to other people because I spoke it? Mmm. 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 <laughs> Could it be possible? I'm getting what I'm getting from her because what I released on her. And, then, and here's the crazy part. I'm jealous and envious because she treats them better now. Come on, I know, I know how church people do it. And they sit around and say, she always nice to them, but always mean to me. Come on, you spoke that. You, your old words have produced this. So you've got to say some new stuff to see something new. Life and death in the power of your tongue. If you're tired of what you live in and see and say something new, you won't say it new if you don't expect it to be new. So when you wake, wake up in the morning, this is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I know it ain't all well, but I'm going to say something differently. I'm going to say it until it becomes new. You know what I figured out? The reality of new is what's old to you is new to me. All right, let me explain that so I can get out of here. Let me explain that. You may be used to it this kind of way. I ain't never had it like that before. So what may be old to you can still be new to me. See, I got the revelation. I was going to show you all these pictures. The church in Kenya called me, sent me, some, sent me an email, sent some pictures. And they're so excited. And they said, we're we going we to do something new. We've got to do something different. And I'm just looking at these pictures. I'm saying, and I caught on a revelation. They worship God in a tent, a four-sided tent with makeshift flaps on the side. And I'm saying, I need something else right here. And I said, if they had this, <laughs> if they had this, because what's old to me is new to them. And so they're excited, just the thought of getting inside of a building. See, see, where your expectation is determines where you go and what you say. So while I'm too busy to talk about what ain't, they talk about said, I wish I could. And they're expecting it, but here's the difference, ladies and gentlemen, here's the difference. Because they're expecting it, they're doing something about it. And please make yourself this last note, because time won't allow me to do it. You'll never do something about what you don't expect to happen. If you don't expect it to happen, you ain't going to do anything about it. All right. As long as my child, as long as I believe my child is crazy, I'm going to do nothing different. Say, you'll be out the house soon. Just keep going. But if I get a revelation that they can be different and I change my expectations, I'll start doing stuff differently to them, for them, and about them. I told you revelation will always bring you to a new season. Once I get the revelation that it's not like this always, my expectation changes, then my action changes. And what the devil has mastered in this season of your life is stealing your vision that something will be better. 
He's convinced you that it's going to always be this way. It will never change. And you just sitting here waiting on your, your, your exit, your death sentence so you can exit this prison. I was watching the movie last night. I was trying to sleep. I don't sleep on Sunday nights well. I was watching a movie. And I was watching Shawshank Redemption. And um, I never really paid attention to it. I just, I watch it. I just never really paid attention to it. But a couple of scenes that slapped me last night. One man, two men boasting in a prison. One man miserable, the other man happy in there. <laughs> I'm finished when I tell you all this story. Oh, Dr. Morgan is miserable in there. He's, he, he's, he's even gotten scared to get parole because he said, I'm institutionalized now. I can function in this. I, I mastered this. Matter of fact, his words in the movie was, they look up to me in here. Out there, I'll be a nobody. So I like being here. While the other guy, what's his name, Andy, the other guy, advancing and start handling the warden's money. And Andy is optimistic while in prison, smiling the whole movie, while everybody says miserable. What they never knew the whole time, here's a revelation, Andy always saw himself outside that prison. <laughs> and every day while they was miserable and crying, Andy was digging a tunnel to get out. You see what happened? Because he, ex- he saw himself out and expected out, he always took action to not stay where he was. While everybody else was miserable. Inside, just going through the motion of routines, just barely surviving because they don't see nothing better happening. And they're sitting there digging a tunnel, saying, it won't be like this always. I'm getting up out of here. See, and see, so I got the revelation in the spirit realm. If some of us would just wake up and say, it won't be like this always, <laughs> we'll start doing small little things. And if you start doing these little things, you'll soon find yourself in a whole different place because, watch this, and it took everything the warden threw at him and walked out of prison a rich man. See, he didn't stand there complaining about the, the trouble, the persecution. Put me in isolation, no problem. When I come back, I'm going to appeal for more money. It ain't no big deal. I'm not, I'm not condoned, but, but Andy, he, he, had to rea- he got the revelation. The more you afflict me, the more I'm going to grow. So just keep on afflicting me. You strengthen my resolve to come out of this. I'm prophesying to y'all. That, that's your word. You stop complaining about what God may be doing in your life because it should be strengthening your resolve to come up out of what you've been in. You just got to stop complaining and start saying some new stuff. Try saying thank you a little more. Try, try saying thank you, God. I know it ain't well, but just thank you anyway. Thank you that I'm still alive. Thank you that I'm not you know, I, I know I have all the latest clothes, but thank you, I do have clothes on my body. Just thank you. I know I'm not eating steak every day, but at least, at least I'm eating. <laughs> Be honest. I'm just, I'm just being honest. You know, start saying thank you because you'll find out that that attitude, expectancy, will breed something else to happen in your life. But, 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 we're gonna pick up on this next week anniversary, week after that. I really want y'all to see that God is very serious about doing something new in your life. Now, you got homework this week. I... Wait a minute, hold on. Y'all, don't, y'all, told, y'all just to come to church and sit around and let somebody tell y'all someone out some responsibility in the kingdom. No, you, if a man don't work, he don't eat. So listen, y'all, you, you, plan on, you plan on eating at church, you got to do some works. You want God to give you something new, work out what he gave you last time. Man, don't work, you don't eat. So let me tell you, tell you what you got to do this week. I'm challenging you for the next seven days. Begin to say and decree new things about yourself and your life. Everywhere where you have been going up under, say something new and different about it. Say something new about it. Don't keep saying the same thing. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, you will say enough to get in your spirit and you'll be. The Bible says, I'll have whatsoever things I say I have. So if I said enough, I'm going to speak into existence, even if I got to do it by myself. I'm going, I'm, I'm going on. I'm not going to stay here. Um, give, me, give, me, give, me, give me some closing music. Um, not, 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 
not the um, not not the music they scared of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Mm, my time. I, I try to stick to time. I try my best to. Now listen, I'm. T- See what he playing, y'all. No. You say you say that for offering. Say say that for offering. Just just um, never mind. Say that for say that say those two for offering. Say those two for offering. Um, for those that don't know, they laugh because y'all know do know music sets the moment. So depending on what music you play, depending on what happens around that. Thank you. Um, I'm not the DJ, but. Sh- so here, did I tell? So that's your homework. The next seven days, say something different. Say something new about yourself. Decree something new. I'm teaching and training you how to prophesy to your own future. Because life and death is in the power of your tongue, not mine. And I do not want to raise a group of people who learned to let me come and do all this prophesying, and you go home and counsel it all with your words. Y'all do understand that, right? This, this is just me teaching. Get ready to get y'all from ready. That's, that's me doing teaching now. I don't care how much a, an anointed man or woman God speak over you. You can cancel all of it out with your words. And so don't be guilty this week of speaking and canceling out what God wants to do in your life. Speak life. Now, here are the areas. I want you to speak life to your relationships. I want you to speak life to your identity. This is going to be rough for some people. I want you to speak life to your identity. I want you, if you just find four or five scriptures, if you need, if you need a, 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 a declaration sheet, email me. I will email you a whole declaration sheet of stuff you can say, scripturally based, already put together, um, and, and you'll be able to say it. It's all scripture. But I need you to, to speak about your relationships, your identity. I want you to last thing speak about your future. I want you to I want you to decree about your future. He has an expected end for me. He he has good things in store for me. He daily loads me with benefits. Me, I, these are the three areas I want you to speak to and prophesy to about your own self. And if it does not work within seven days, if you don't, if nothing changes, then we're going to have to have to talk with God and say, God, your word doesn't work. But you already promised it will not come back void. It's going to accomplish whatever you send it to. So it's impossible to not get results. All right, y'all get your offering. That ain't, that ain't helping nothing, is it? The music he playing for it. <laughs>